for once not in the studio or in the editing suite, but sitting here in the audience because we're gonna put on a show. Hey everyone, Stefan here. I hope you're doing well. As you can tell, we're in the theater today. So I thought I'll take you on a little tiki tour, show you what we're doing, how we set things up, and then of course show you also a little glimpse of the actual show itself. So I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the theater. So what's going on today? Today is a day one. We are lighting in the show. We're creating all the presets. And we, of course, have to make sure that we get the camera settings right for tomorrow's shoot. Or actually, we're shooting for two days. So I'm using two different little devices here. Not so little, actually. From Sikonic, which I'm a big fan of and used the, their gear for so many years in the studio, mainly. First, of course, we have to measure the light output in terms of f-stops so that we know exactly what to set our cameras to to get the perfect exposure in terms of light, uh, I guess, um, quantity. But then we have a big issue that we have many, many different fixtures here which use different lamps and different ways to produce color. And that's where this baby comes into play. This is the C800, which measures the actual colors. So we have tungsten lights, 4Ks, uh, profilers, and so on and so forth. If I measure this right now, that would be 5700 Kelvin. And we have to match that with LED washers, which are moving lights, but they don't have that white then we have what I call scanners or other moving light spots with gobos and color wheels. Some of them are uh, CMY mixing all over the show. So how to match them all? Well, that's the combination of those two babies. If I would try to do this by eye, it would take me forever. I much rather measure. So then we get the perfect white and can also avoid issues that we have with sensor. Now, every camera has a weakness somewhere. So with my cameras, the extremely saturated dark blues might sometimes be a little bit of a problem, even shooting in log or in raw. So I try to avoid that. And that's what I use this for. Now, I want to go into deep details of how this works. I'll probably produce another video if you're interested in this, but just saying, i rather measure than guess. All right, so let's have a look around. So where to start? Long before arriving at the theater, I've already prepared drawings of all the different light scenes we need, which we will program today. The planning phase is both a creative and at times a worrying job. I try to imagine how certain lights translate to a final picture once the stage is no longer empty. And I wonder if what I've imagined actually works. And this year it's all about filming the performances, so all the lights will be set to work best in camera. To do so, we need to overcome a few obstacles. As I mentioned, we are mixing many different light types and sources. However, we don't want to change camera settings during the show, so we need to set a baseline, I guess. Our baseline will be based on those lights we cannot change, of course, which are the tungsten lights, profilers, Fresnels, 4Ks, you know, the conventional lights in the theater. To start, I measure exactly these lights and they're placed over the audience and cover the front part of the stage. This will give us the proper exposure and also color temperature to which all the cameras will be set. And to measure this, I use my Seconic 858 light meter to determine the exposure. And then I use the C800, also from Seconic, which is a color meter to get the exact color temperature. 
The light we just measured are quite a bit far away from the stage and therefore they're not as bright as the same fixtures installed above the stage. To make sure we don't create any overexposed images, we now measure the overhead lights and dim them to the point where they match the exposure settings from our front of house lights. Next is to check all the non-tungsten lights. I'm talking about moving lights, spots, washers. Some are HMI, others are LED. Some can mix colors, others use color wheels with color gels. As we are renting the theater, we have to deal with whatever there is. So the key issue here is that every unit produces different colors. This is where the C800 comes in. In this case, you see three spots. Each is set to white. The first one measures 5400 Kelvin, which would be daylight. The second spot is wide open, doesn't have any gels in it, and is measuring at a very cold 10,000 Kelvin. And the third used a gel and measured a tungsten equivalent of 3200. So we know we are using the one with the tungsten gel at 3200 to match our front of house light. And that's the technical part done. The rest is pure fun and creativity. While I'm back at sorting through my light plans, Alex is programming all the various scenes and he can program lights faster than I can spell my name. He's been helping me in getting these shows done for many years now and I simply couldn't do it without him. At times he can't help himself play around a bit, but I guess that's why it's so much fun playing with lights. Anyway, here's an example of how the final product looks like. In this case, you see some nice light blue lights creating an awesome silhouette for our dancers. The light fixture we use for this scene uses color wheels and color gels and it doesn't have a light blue gel. But you know that default white that we measured before at 10,000 Kelvin? It is producing this nice light blue for the cameras. Now we use it to our advantage on purpose. And here are a few more examples from the show. Well, there you go, that was our little tour. I hope you liked what we created and I see you again probably next year. Sounds so far away. Oh well, it's the end of December. I hope you had an amazing Christmas. Look after yourself and create something awesome.